Okay, as we go through and we've been working with um, fractions and decimals, I keep saying that a fraction is really just another way of writing a division problem. So if that's true, and we have one half, then what does that really mean if we use that division? Well, that literally means one divided by two. And in the whole number one, the decimal naturally falls after the, the one. So if I were going to do this division with decimals, I could line up my decimal, and two will not go into one, but we could add a zero, and two will go into ten five times. Five times two would be ten, and when we subtract, we get zero remainder. So literally, one half means 0.5. This would just be the fractional form, and 0.5 would be the decimal form. But they have the exact same meaning. So this is how we're going to change fractions over to decimals. We're just going to do the division. So here we have our first example is 3 fifths. So we're going to take and actually do the division. 3 divided by 5. So if I put my decimal where it naturally lies at the, at the end of the 3, we're going to line up our decimal. Now 5 will not go into 3, so I'm going to have to add a 0. 5 will go into 30 6 times. 6 times 5 would be 30, so we have 0 remainder. That tells us then that 3 fifths in decimal form is 0.6, or you could write 0 0.6. It means the exact same thing. What about 3 eighths? Well, we're just going to do the division here. So we're going to take 3 divided by 8, and the decimal naturally falls behind the 3 in that whole number. So we're going to line our decimals up. 8 will not go into 3, so we have to add a 0. Now 8 will go into 30. It will go in how many times? 3 times? 3 times 8 would be 24. And when we subtract, we would have 6 left over. Now we want to keep going until we're done, or, I don't know that I paid that close of attention to it, but in our directions, it said round to the nearest thousandth if necessary. So that means we need to have at least three decimal places whenever we're done here. So we can't stop. We need to add another zero so that we can drop that down. Now eight will go into 60 seven times. Seven times eight would be 56. And then when we do the subtraction, we'd have four. We still don't have three decimal places, so we've got to keep going. So we're just going to keep adding zeros until we have, till we're done, we can't divide anymore, or until we have um, something we can round to the nearest thousand. Now eight will go into forty five times. Five times eight would be forty. So now we have no remainder. Three eighths is equivalent to point three seven five in decimal form.